Dennis Oglesby is our next candidate to speak. Dennis Oglesby is running for U.S. Congress in the 3rd Congressional District, which includes Cole, Callaway, Miller, Osage, Marys, Montgomery, Gasconade, Franklin, Warren, and Lincoln counties, and a significant portion of St. Charles, Jefferson, and Camden counties. Dennis Oglesby is running against Democrat Megan Rezebeck for the August 4th Democratic primary to face incumbent Republican Blaine Lutdemeyer in the November general election. Dennis has extensive education and experience in business management. Dennis is committed to returning government control to the people he represents and to eliminating the influence of corporate and special interests. Welcome, Dennis. Thank you, Mary. And uh, thank you everyone for joining. I see a lot of familiar names and faces and I won't call you each out individually, but I have been talking to a lot of you and I, I appreciate your attendance tonight. Um, so before I get started, I, I kind of have a question for you. Um, and and the, this is a question that I throw out all the time. How many times have you heard your friends, neighbors, family say, those people in Washington don't understand us. They don't get us. How many times have you yourself said it? I'm sick of this politics as usual. I am running in the third congressional district for that very reason. Because so many in our district have long been ignored, um, fallen, just, just set aside by our current representative. Uh, so what I wanted to do tonight is kind of give you a story, a story of who we are in the third district, a story of our current state, and then tie that together with who I am and why I'm running. So it's a, kind of a phased approach to this. And it's important because we are falling victim to a narrative game, a narrative that the GOP wants us to buy into. They have determined who we are in the third congressional district, and it's not true. And if we start to change the narrative a little bit, we will see huge progress. So first and foremost, if many of you are in St. Charles County, do you know that the third congressional district is actually the largest portion of St. Charles County? It is split between two and three, but you're probably hearing a lot about district two right now. Most of your residents probably fall in district three. What else is being said about district three? You will hear over and over again, the third district in Missouri is a rural district red ties, always going to be Dem a Republican area. Okay, you will hear there are majority farmers. Okay, that's their narrative. But what's the facts? Facts are only 1.3% of the population in our district actually do work in agriculture. They're critically important, but they don't make up that significant population that we're hearing about. Who is in our district? 21% of our people work in education and social services. 13% work in manufacturing. Biggest point, the average median income in the third congressional district, which is the most populous district in the state of Missouri, is in that $50,000 range. The people in our district are struggling. They have needs that are not being met and they're being ignored. So what's the current state? Well, unfortunately, the current state in our district is a man by the name of Blaine Lukemeyer. Who is Blaine Lukemeyer? He wants you to believe that he is a family farmer. He wants you to believe that he is a small business owner. But the reality is, Blaine Lukemeyer inherited his family farm and the small business. He went to school specifically for political science. He is a lifelong politician and a multimillionaire. What has he done? He's been in office for 12 years. He has written seven bills that became a law. Just seven 
in that entire 12 year period. What were in those bills? Three of them renamed post offices. One of them was for a commemorative Mark Twain coin. And the others, I still can't understand because I don't work in that deep financial sector. But what I can tell you is, the second they passed, the financial industry made significant contributions to his reelection fund. I say all that just to tell you that in 12 years in office, he has written seven bills that became law that did not benefit any of our families in the state. Who do they benefit? His donors. Who are his donors? Insurance companies, big banks. This is all FEC open record information that any voter can see, but no one has taken the time to share it with our residents. So why am I running? Well, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I grew up in North St. Louis County um, in a town named Jennings, uh, which borders the now infamous Ferguson, Missouri. My dad is now a retired police chief and my mom is a bookkeeper. We struggled. Struggled is an understatement for what we went through. Our school district was a small urban district. We couldn't even afford buses. 95% black. I saw so many injustices when I was growing up to my friends, to my family, and also to my father who was working the police force and had so many children surrounding him who called him dad. And I also watched my mom cry the day we no longer qualified for reduced lunches and she had to pay a dollar ten for each of her lunches. Three kids. She cried. Then I entered the workforce and continued working on my education. So years later, I now have extensive degrees in, in, in business management. I've been in print and promotional products my whole life. But most importantly, I am a member of the community I aim to represent. I am a member of the working class. I started out as a union laborer making pocket folders for $7.50 an hour. I have advanced my career only due to my own efforts. I understand what our people are dealing with, and I understand that all they're getting in Washington right now is a bunch of name calling, finger pointing, and inability to work across the aisle. If we have the simplistic message that we want to represent people and actually listen to them, and that we have the same experiences, it speaks leaps and bounds. And that's why my campaign has a list of over 575 Republicans who now support us. Because the short story is we're sick of politics as usual, and we need to focus on the issues that impact our families immediately. Those issues, healthcare, 51% of people who responded to our survey said healthcare was their top issue. Why is that? because premiums are on the rise, deductibles are on the rise, but incomes are not. We're not maintaining pace. That's why we need a healthcare for all system as soon as possible. Education, we have to support our teachers. At a federal level, sure, I can't do a lot in the state for funding, but I can be a voice. Workers' rights. I stand with the unions and I support the rights of the workers to bind together and fight against uh, corporate corruption. And then government reform. Obviously, I'm running against a dark money opponent who takes all of his donations from corporations and special interests. So I think that needs to be fixed. Most importantly, fix the economy. Give people a living wage they can actually live off of, which I believe is actually in that $18 range. Overall, that's the story that molds my campaign and why I want to represent the citizens of the third district in Congress. So any questions you have, I'm ready for. Well, there's uh, one request, which is to, if you have a third district fact sheet uh, that you could share with us, that, that would be great. 
and um, how many hospitals are still open in the third district? And you've got a minute and a half. Oh, Audrey, tough question. Um, I cannot tell you specifically how many are still open. Um, I know that we are losing far too many, but I will have to get back to you on how many still exist. Uh, that number changes far too frequently. 